In this class, we've already studied a variety of media. And remember, by media, we mean different ways that we communicate, including traditional media such as newspapers, television and movies, as well as new media such as online newspapers and blogs and social media. Today, we're going to talk about one genre of new media, interactive games. This includes games you play on a game console, computer or smartphone. All right then. It'll come as no surprise that video games have been one of the fastest growing types of new media. And as these games have gotten more popular, we have started to see more research on the effects of playing these interactive games. Today, we'll look at some of this research on these digital games and talk about some of the effects, positive and negative, of playing them. So, what are some of the potential benefits of playing interactive games? The first benefit is a cognitive benefit, improvements in how our brains work. One of these benefits is improved spatial ability. Spatial ability is the ability to understand the relationship between objects in space, like when you look at a map on your phone to find your way in an unfamiliar city, or when you see relationships in a geometry problem. Spatial ability is especially important in math and engineering. One study of spatial ability looked at people who play action games, games like The Legend of Zelda or Batman or Grand Theft Auto. In these action games, the player moves through a three-dimensional world. Researchers took a group of people who had no experience playing these types of action games and gave them a test that measured their spatial ability. Then, the participants played an action game for 50 hours and took the spatial ability test again. The study found that players did much better on the spatial ability test after playing the game. So this shows that playing action games can actually improve your spatial ability skills. Another cognitive benefit of video games is in motivation. In psychology, motivation is the desire to work towards a goal, even when you fail along the way. Motivation is the drive or energy inside us that makes us try again and again until we reach the goal. It's interesting. With engaging games, failure in the game does not usually lead to feelings of anger or frustration or the desire to just quit. Instead, players feel excitement and want to try again and again. In other words, they feel motivation to continue. This aspect of interactive games can be utilised in education. Teachers can employ game psychology to keep students working on difficult learning tasks. Now, these are only two of the possible benefits, but I also want to mention potential problems. There are two main concerns about the effects of electronic games. One negative effect is game addiction. Gaming is an enjoyable pastime for many people, but gaming becomes an addiction when it starts to interfere with a person's relationships or when it interferes with their ability to accomplish other goals, like getting good grades or being successful at work. There are several signs that a person may have a game addiction. One sign is playing video games instead of spending time with family and friends. The person becomes so involved in the fantasy world of the video game that he or she doesn't want to spend time with real people. Another sign is the person feels angry or anxious or depressed when they are not able to play. It's estimated that about 10% of gamers have a true addiction, so it is a serious problem. Another area of concern is the effect of fantasy games on the player. In particular, what is the effect of playing violent fantasy games? Does playing a violent game make someone want to hurt another person in real life? Well, the answer to that is not clear. However, studies show that playing violent video games can cause people to be less sensitive to violence and become more aggressive in their real life. For example, a study of 13 and 14 year olds found that those who played violent games were more likely to argue with their teachers and to get into fights with their classmates. But there really isn't enough proof or evidence to say for sure that video games directly cause this aggressive behaviour. 
These studies only show a connection between violent games and aggressive behavior. In other words, aggressive kids may choose to play violent games. It's not clear if the games make them aggressive or if they like the games because they already are aggressive. Well, there's something for us all to think about. The potential benefits and drawbacks of the increased use of interactive games in our society.